Exercise 12. About language learning. Hi, Susan. How are you getting on with your English studies? It's hard. I have been in England for a year, but I still have a lot of problems both in speaking and reading. Don't worry. You have to be patient and practice them more. It's very strange, you know, my son Eric, he is only four, but he seems to learn English much more quickly than I do. Why is this? Why is it easy for young children to learn a language? That's a good question. I think part of the answer is that children have so many needs. They need to be helped by grown-ups. They have to make their needs known. And they are always watching the effect of what they say and trying new ways of getting what they want. Children are learning new things all the time. I agree with you. We adults need to learn new things as well, especially when we settle in a foreign country. But it takes us a longer time to get used to a new life than young children. They seem to adapt more quickly. Yes. Another part of the answer I'd like to point out is that children are not, as older people sometimes are, fixed in their ways of living. When they are taken from one country to another, they change easily from one language to another, from one bed to another, from one food to another. Older people are more fixed in their ways. They have been hearing and talking one language for a long time. Their ways of hearing and making sounds and of putting words together are like the rails a train goes on. They have been up and down their lines of talk and thought too many times to change them easily. I quite agree with you. A child is freer in his ways. He is more like a bird. He is free to go in any direction he wants. He is free to hear sounds as they are and make them as he hears them. He is free to put new words together in new ways in speaking a new language. I think that is why they learn things so fast. The more languages you hear and get to know, the more you will see how any language is made up of a small number of sounds put together in different ways. For example, in English, light and right are different words with only one sound in them different. The same is true of long and wrong. If a learner does not hear these different sounds as different, he may get the wrong meaning. That's true. I have had this kind of problem. Six months ago, I was asking the way to the station. The man told me to turn to the right, but what I thought he said was to turn at the light, so I tried to find the light. It took me hours to get to the station. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, most people learn their mother language without being able to give any account at all of how it works. They learn to talk as they learn to walk, without any idea of how they do it. People who learn to use a language well do so through talking with others who use it well, through reading good writers, and through watching the effects on others of what they say and how they say it. I will try all these. The world needs more people who can use languages well. Language is as necessary to our minds as the air we breathe is to our bodies. Exercise 13. How to take notes. Today's discussion is on note-taking. Note-taking is one of the important skills for classroom success. There is no one best way to take notes but your own experience and some suggestions may help you to cope well with university study here. Chris, you start first. How do you take notes when you are in class? I always keep track of the notes by putting a date and heading on the first page and numbering pages that follow. 
and I often make sure to identify the lecture topic and the class in which the lecture takes place. I think this is very important because when you study later, you will be able to match up class notes and textbook notes or assignments on the same topic. I do the same. I often keep the notes for one class separated from the notes for other classes, so I use separate notebooks for each class. I use dividers to set aside different sections in one notebook. I think both of the methods are good. Some students like to use a loose leaf binder so that lecture notes, textbook notes, and the instructor's handout may be taken out of it and reorganized for study purposes. That's a good idea to use a loose leaf binder. I will buy one for my note taking. I like to use a ballpoint pen for taking notes. So do I. But I prefer to use blue or black ones because the other colors, such as red or green, are hard on the eyes. It's a good idea to use a ballpoint pen because pencils fade easily, and a pen sometimes blurs and soaks through the paper. My handwriting is poor, so I often print the notes for clarity after class. That's a very good way to do it. It's very important to make your notes clear to read because you may use them for your essay. I often use standard abbreviations in my notes in order to speed up note taking. For example, intro for introduction, info for information, depth for department. This is one way to speed up your writing. You can also make up some of your own words or phrases that you use often. Make a key for your abbreviations so you won't forget what they mean. Okay, I will try next time. I often copy anything that is written on the board or on overhead transparencies into my notes because I find test questions often come from material that is presented in these ways. Really? I hadn't noticed that. I think you'd better organize your notes after class. Try to summarize the points in your own words. It will be easier for you to remember your notes. That is a good suggestion. Another suggestion is that you should review your notes to fill in gaps while the information is still fresh in your mind. The purpose of taking notes is to help you remember information. When I seem to be missing something, I often compare notes with my classmate or see the instructor. That's the way to do it. Thank you very much for your time. I think new students may use and adapt some of your good methods for note taking into their own study. Exercise 14 The Dean's Speech. Good morning, students. As many of you have already heard, tuition fees will be going up to $3,600 per term, starting in September 2001. I felt I should explain to you why the fees are increasing. The primary reason is, of course, that expenses have increased, including faculties and staff salaries. Our operating expenses have also increased in the past year. As we try to maintain a high level of service to our international students, we have added new staff in the last year to meet the growing needs, including a manager of admissions. We have also expanded our homestay staff to improve our homestay services. Unfortunately, when expenses increase, the costs have to be passed on to the student. This is the first increase in fees since 1998, however, and we are trying to keep the fees as reasonable as possible. To compare our fees with other institutions in the province, the University College of the Caribou is raising its fees to $3,800 per semester starting in September 2001. Programs at UBC 
start at $13,830 per year. At many institutions, the tuition fees for academic courses in the third and fourth year level are higher than those for the first two years are because the costs to run the courses are higher. We have decided not to differentiate the fees, but to balance the costs by charging the same tuition for all four years. I would like to tell you that we value your opinion and want to make sure that you are satisfied as a student at the college. If any of you would like to meet with me to discuss the fees or any other matter, you are welcome to visit me in my office in Building 359. Please phone 741-2795 for an appointment. Exercise 15. How to write a summary. Good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about how to write a summary. I think if you remember one word, it will help you to write a summary. The word is simple. This word represents six steps to writing a good summary. Simple's first letter is S. S here stands for the first step you should do. That is, to study the text carefully. And letter I here stands for the second step, to identify the key points while you read the text. M here represents the third step of writing a summary, that is, to make notes. Then the fourth one is to put points in order. The next step is to leave out unnecessary detail. The last step is to edit your first draft. Now, I will talk about these steps one by one. Let us start with studying the text. When you get an article, you should read it first fairly quickly to get a sense of the general meaning. Then, read it more carefully, following the writer's argument and noticing what is fact and what is opinion, what is a general statement, and what is a particular example. It is often helpful to summarize each paragraph in a few words at this stage. Now, let's turn to identifying the key points. You must go through the text and mark the places where important information is given. You can underline or highlight with a colored pen or simply make a mark in the margin. The third step is to make notes. This is a very important stage. You should write down the key points you've identified in note form in your own words. This is also especially important in an exam because the examiner needs to know you understand what you have written and that you are not just copying from the text. Let's turn to the fourth step, to put points in order. You should look at the list of points you have made and see if there are any which go together. Then decide the best order to put the points in. Number the points in order. Now, let's look at the next stage. Leave out unnecessary detail. This stage is much like the tailor who cuts off unnecessary parts for making clothes. You should choose the important facts and get rid of unnecessary detail. The last stage is to edit your first draft. You should check the spelling and grammar, counting the number of words. If you have many fewer than the limit, you should add in something, so it is important to check the original text again. If you have more than the limit, look for ways of combining points in one sentence or of losing words here and there. If you follow the word simple, it may help you to make a good summary in an academic essay.